last week, Joe Satriani joined us in the Rockline studio, and Dave, he left this question for you. He wanted to know, you recently switched record labels to the home of Christina Aguilera. Have you met her yet? I have not met Christina Aguilera yet, no. Um, Would you like to? I'm kind of a lowly, gross rock and roll guy, and I, I don't I don't really think we mingle in the same circles. But um, I'm sure she's very nice. I've heard she's very nice. Everyone at the label says she's really great, so... I haven't met her, but I usually don't hang out. I'm not a party guy, so I go play the show and then watch Spank Division all night long. <laughs> yeah. Now, you're in the Washington, D.C. area, and you're at D.C. 101. Our next caller is listening to that station. Her name is Zarina. You want to talk to her? Hey, how you doing? There she Please is. speak. Hi, Dave. Hi. I have two questions for you. I heard you yes, were recently in your home studio recording some songs. I was wondering what they were. Well, we went in to record um, B-sides for singles because we don't release singles to buy here in America, which is kind of a shame, but we never really do. We, they're always imports. But on every single that we release, we usually put two or three uh, unreleased tracks on the B-sides. So sometimes they're old covers of older songs, sometimes they're newer songs, sometimes they're live versions of songs that are on the album. But like we recorded... Um, a version of this song called Baby Hold On To Me by Eddie Money that, oh my God, it's so good. It turned out so great. And then we did a cover of this song called Lonely Boy. It was uh, by a guy from the 70s named Andrew Gold. Yeah, I remember that. It was that, one of the yeah. greatest songs ever. We did that and it turned out great. And then we recorded a couple new songs. And this was the first time we went into the studio, into the studio with um, Chris Shiflett, our new guitar player. And it was awesome. And he was reading my mind the whole time. He'd he and I come up with very similar ideas for, for guitar parts and it was his first time in the studio with us and I think he was a little nervous but it worked out great, man. It now you've, great. you've recorded Baker Street by Jerry Rafferty and, and somebody told yeah. me you've recorded about 35 or 40 covers. Is that, is that true? We've done a lot of covers because you know what else we do is whenever you go over to England um, you're usually asked to do a BBC session where like an evening session you go in and they have these amazing recording studios you go in and you record uh, four songs and they either have your special that Friday night where they play all the four songs or they play a f song every week every Friday night for a week and and it's exclusively for the BBC and what a lot of people do is they go in and record alternate versions of songs that are on their record but we always see it as an opportunity to go record obscure covers so we went in and we did carry on my wayward son by kansas we did uh baker street was one of the bbc songs we did um what else did we do we did this song called drive me wild by vanity six that was kind of fun that was a prince band i don't know if you remember that yeah, and yeah. uh mm -hmm. what else have we done i guess that's about it but we yeah oh we also did uh, down in the park by gary newman and I love doing cover songs. I really do. Oh, you know what we just did? Oh, my God. The best, what we just did. We were just in England, and we recorded Have a Cigar by Pink Floyd with Brian May from Queen playing guitar, me playing drums, Taylor singing, and we recorded it at Brian May's house outside of London. Is he the coolest awesome guy or what? Is he? Oh, my God, man. It was like... We're sitting there at Brian, and he's he's the sweetest man in the world. He's amazing. He's an amazing guitar player, playing the same guitar that he and his father built, the only guitar he's ever played in Queen. That same guitar, he and his father built it when he was a kid, through like a bunch of Vox AC30s, just turned it, and all he he just touches the guitar, and it sounds like Queen. And you're in this beautiful house in the country outside of London, and at one point he's like, "Oh, have I have I showed you the Queen room yet?" I'm like, uh, no. So we go upstairs to the queen room, and it's this room filled, like, okay, filled with gold records, right? So usually you see gold records, and it's, like, presented to Joe Schmo for, uh, in, uh, whatever, in, for sales of, um, you know, 500,000 in the UK, or for sales of 1 million in Canada or something like that. We were looking every, first of all, he's got a, a bazillion gold records and each one was like 
um, for sales of twenty three million <laughs> in Japan, <laughs> for sales of eighty six million in China. Like the craziest, craziest. It was so awesome. It was such an honor. So yeah. that's the that's the most amazing cover we've ever done. And Taylor singing. Taylor has an amazing voice. And so, that should be on great. Mission Impossible too on the soundtrack. And Zarina has another question. What 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 you got, Zarina? Um. Could you tell me something about your side project, ProBot? Oh, ProBot. That's kind of funny. ProBot is something that I was just itching to record. And we had about a week off, and I came home and called my friend Adam Casper, the guy that did our record with us. He recorded our record and helped us produce, and he's probably one of the coolest people in the whole entire world. And I said, hey, man, you want to come out to... to uh, Virginia, I feel like recording. He's like, oh, do you have songs? I said, no. So he came out, and I guess I had been going through this heavy metal withdrawal where all of our songs are nice and sing-songy and fun, and I missed the kind of death metal vibe that I grew up with as a teenager here in Virginia. So I just started coming. I tuned my guitar as low as I could get it, like down to C, and then I just started recording these songs and and uh recorded seven songs and none of them have vocals on it and um decided to call it Probot for no reason at all and but it's just me kind of like the first Foo Fighters record it's just drums bass and guitar very simple uh very heavy and I'm auditioning vocalists for Probot now so you can submit your entries to our website and I'll look every day but you know what I'd really love what I'd really love to do is I'd love to get all of my favorite old uh, singers to sing on like a track each, kind of like the Santana thing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> but like not? a death metal Santana record. <laughs> so like the singer, there was a heavy metal band from Chicago called Trouble that were the. Um, they're my favorite heavy metal band of all time. They're amazing. Trouble. So Listen to them since I was a teenager. So the singer of Trouble to sing one song. King Diamond to sing another song. Uh, what would be another one? Uh, Tom Warrior from Celtic Frost to sing another one. You know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. All those guys. There you go. Be great. Serena, thanks for being on. We'll Rob take- Thomas to sing one, you know. We're going to play Monkey Wrench for you right now and then some more live rock and roll coming up from Dave in just a moment at Rockline.